So what we have been doing is consulting with those judicial branches and helping them be more transparent, have more information there, and actually provide the citizens of their countries with all the real, relevant data that should be uh, available for citizens uh, in the first place. Secondly, um, common law systems have a culture of transparency embedded in the way you work. That was not the case of uh, civil law systems. So there was a, a threat, a push of making sure that, especially the Latin American countries with the continental law system, would actually evolve uh, during the different versions of our index uh, to uh, a certain ranking. Third, in the case of the Chilean judicial uh, branch, what they did actually was sit with us and said, we want to make sure that we are high in this index. As many countries were fighting for this, and this is very important, the, the competition to be high in this ranks in some way gave us the information we needed to do our studies, but also made it important for that, those judicial branches to be more transparent and to put that information up there. The Chilean judicial uh, branch actually set up, after the third version of this index, a special division in charge of active transparency and communications, two aspects that were very, very uh, weak in their uh, prior organization. And that's another reason why they rank as, as high as they do. And um, as I told you, there is, a, of course, a skew there, or a, a deficiency in our methodology in terms of how we capture the situation of countries that are at a federal, uh, have a federal uh, setup. That's the same uh, global ranking at the eighth edition, and the judiciary uh, ranking as well uh, for 2012 and 2013. As you see, when you go to the prosecutor's office, uh, there is a change. Uh, that's in some way a little more competitive. But then again, uh, um, Costa Rica shows up number one, and then the US in terms of the information you got there. Um, and they've been, as Costa Rica as well, uh, was one of the prosecutor offices that actually made a special effort to make sure that transparency, active transparency, was a core and key objective of uh, their uh, mission and their day-to-day -day work. Um, and this is the evolution. This is what we really wanted. We really don't care, or we shouldn't care that much about where a specific country ranks. What we wanted was the competition effect, and we got it. The competition effect actually played out the two objectives we were looking for. Better information to make studies, case law, uh, base law studies, and be able to then measure uh, the uh, gaps and be able to develop and design new justice systems for those countries. And second, also make sure that you got information transparency and you are fighting corruption in the way of getting information up there. And this is what has happened. Up until 2012, all countries consistently as a whole have been measuring higher. Um, during the eight years that the judicial branches uh, have been uh, categorized, uh, they've been uh, on average scoring from 29.44% to 48.59%. That's the increase of their transparency and the uh, information. And uh, for what uh, goes with the public prosecutor's offices, from 1472, of course below, they were starting, uh, to uh, up to 37.6%. So again, uh, as you see, there is a, a trend that we want to maintain. That's the reason why uh, CEJA is trying to have this index again uh, back uh, in 2015. And in the top 10 ranked, there are countries from both continental law and common law systems. So both systems do work and, and have a, an equivalency in terms of, of their uh, ranking in the index. Caribbean countries uh, fall behind the rest of the Americas. There are even some countries that don't even have a official website of the judicial branch, for instance. Uh, they're at that point. And um, in almost all countries, judiciary is more willing to give information than prosecutors' offices are. That's a trend across, across board, I mean across all the Americas as well. 
So our challenges for the 2014-2015 uh, index is redefining the methodology to obtain better data from countries with federal systems, as the case of Canada, the USA, Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. What we do currently is basically represent those countries with the capital city or province or state, the most populated state province, and the lowest or smallest GDP, internal GDP, from a province, state, or, uh, or, um, or other uh, division, uh, political division. And that's the way we build that ranking. So we have to think about a new methodology that better captures uh, and represents what happens in the systems. In the case of Canada, for instance, we know and we realize that most of the um, justice is delivered at a provincial level. So there is a problem there capturing that kind of information and activity at a federal level, and that's something we must, uh, we must correct. And we want to generate reports about uh, reactive transparency, not only now active, but reactive transparency in courts and prosecutors' offices as well. And, of course, we want to improve the knowledge of our index to make sure that this trend keeps on going up uh, in terms of transparency, active and uh, reactive as well. And third, and not, uh, or last but not least important, we have to, of course, have this index uh, written down in English, at least in terms of the methodology, the technical tools and explanations, to make sure that all around uh, the Americas, this index is used and understood, especially the Caribbean, the Anglo-speaking uh, Caribbean as well. The second index of online judicial services. Okay. Uh, this is a lot shorter. Um, this, what this index does is um, evaluates the potential use of uh, ICTs by women and men of the member states of the OIS. Of course, we had to have a very, um, a very small sample of what we could do among 34 different countries. So what we do is basically we rank uh, to promote, again, the fair competition among countries of the Americas in the use of ICTs. Um, and the way we do that is we take we rank uh, based on answers that citizens receive from judicial websites to selected legal issues. The issues we selected were for defective goods on the um, neighborhood of consumer protection law, non-payment of child support or alimony on the family law sector, small debt on civil law or commercial law, if you will, and unpaid wa wages on labor law. So those four cases or topics were selected, and what we use is indicators relating to response time indicators, hours to receive an automatic answer, or hours to receive a contact answer, which is different, and the kind of response indicator using and following the UN e-government readiness index, uh, now called uh, UN e-government survey, um, emerging online presence, enhanced online presence, transactional online presence, the different categories and evolving uh, categories of that, and connected, connected online presence. And then a category on uh, use, usefulness of content indicator and website good practices indicator, finally. And what we do is we weigh these categories with this uh, percentages <coughs> Uh, to total the 100% time of response indicator. As you see, the most important are kind of response indicator and usefulness of the content indicator uh, up to this point. And again, here's the, uh, here's the sorry, it's in Spanish. Uh, the chart is in Spanish. Uh, so the uh, average is 0 0.439. Uh, Canada ranks first, and it was not made for this presentation. It is as it is with our methodology, of course, the US, Colombia, Brazil, Jamaica, and so forth. Um, so the next edition in 2015 confronts us with uh, two challenges. One is to consolidate the index as periodic survey among 34 members. We have only had one edition, one version of it. So we can't stand, uh, we can't uh, uh, still uh, establish a trend and improve the knowledge and, of, and impact of this uh, index as well, especially in Central America and the Caribbean. 
So uh, that's for now, and thank you very much. Merci.